Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got a cooler today from Cooler Master. This is the Master Air G100M. It's part of the RGB system, so you can do a lot of cool things with the lighting effects on it. Uh, something you don't usually see on a small, low-profile cooler. But uh, that's what this is, a low-profile air cooler. So if you've got a system build and you don't have a lot of space, you don't have room for a liquid-cooled system or radiator, this might be just for you. Plus, it's got the cool RGB lighting effects. And this also has something called... Uh, heat column technology. So we'll have to get this out of the box and see what that's all about. So now it's time for the unboxing. So we go ahead and cut the little seal there as I did a moment ago. And wow, it's a little more challenging than I thought. And we'll just rip it too. Hey, what the heck? Whatever it takes to get the box open, right? So, get the box open. There's the cooler protected in the bag. And slide that out of the way. Let's take a quick look at the cooler. This thing is pretty large. It's got some beef to it. And uh, there's a whole lot of surface area there with all those cooling fins and the fan on top. So it'll be interesting to see the lighting effects on this thing too. If we look at the cords, there are the plugs here right away. There's your four pin PWM that gets power and uh, controls fan speed. And this little guy over here, this is for your RGB. This is what's going to control all your different colors and synchronize it with the rest of uh, your RGB system. So I'll put him off to the side here and let's see what other goodies we have. Pull this foam out of there. Now that's really nice. That really makes sure that your cooler does not get banged up in shipping. You could probably kick this baby down the stairs and run over it with a fork truck and it would survive. I'm kidding, of course. All right, so that's all there is in the box. We have our instruction manual, bag of silica gel to absorb moisture, and then our hardware bag. Let's see what all is in here. Of course we have the base plate, and uh, there's our thermal paste, all of our offsets, some plastic mounting pieces, it looks like some connectors here for part of the RGB system. And then mounting brackets here, depending upon uh, whether you have an AMD or an Intel. In fact, let's go ahead and look at the side of the box here and look at the coverage. Uh, for your CPU sockets, it's hard for you to read, but I'll read it here to you. We've got the Intel LGA2066, the 2011 V3, regular 2011, 1151, 1150, 1155, 56, 1366, 775, and then AMD sockets. Uh, you've got the AM4, AM3+, Plus, all the way down to your uh, AM2, and then your FM2+, Plus, FM2, FM1. So we've got a really wide range of sockets here that this thing will cover. The next thing we'll do here is uh, go through the instructions. I'll take a look at those, and then we'll get this cooler mounted to the motherboard, and then we can do some thermal testing and see how it holds, see how well it holds up. I don't expect it to perform like you would see where, where you have a, a liquid cooling system. When you thrash it thermally, uh, it's not going to respond the same, I would suspect. But we might be surprised. So we'll go through here, get it installed. Typical Cooler Master instructions here. Very well written. Uh, the graphics are very easy to follow. One of the things I've always liked about Cooler Master, they put a lot of time and effort into making sure these things are very easy to follow. All right, let's get her installed. Okay, so we're ready to get started. First thing you do is you put these brackets on and there's a screw right here for each one and you have to mount these yourself. This one is for uh, an AM, or I'm sorry, an Intel installation. The AMD brackets are right here. You can see they're a little bit, a little bit larger and they're shaped a little bit differently, but uh, that's what these are. So these are AMD, these are Intel. And then we want to make sure we peel the sticker off. I usually leave it on to the last minute so I don't scratch or damage the surface. But the first thing you do, you get these brackets on there. And then I'm going to fast forward through the rest of it here so I don't bore you. It's not a lot of fun watching somebody install uh, one of these. But there's the base plate here. It's made for AMD or Intel. Since this is Intel, the Intel side will face down. This side faces uh, the back of the motherboard like that. And then we'll put these pieces in uh, from behind. So I'll fast forward now.
All right, I got my thermal paste on there, kind of mushed on the bottom of the cooler. We'll do a quick test fit, make sure everything looks good. Everything seems to fit nicely. So the next thing we will do is uh, we'll go ahead and clamp it down with these. Okay, so after you get the bottom bracket uh, installed, you get the uh, nuts on top to secure it. You got this handy dandy little wrench uh, that comes with it that makes the installation a little easier. We'll go ahead and snug the nuts there down to secure the cooler uh, to the base. This is always a lot easier to do when the cooler is or the uh, motherboard is not in a case. So I try to do this with the motherboard removed whenever I can. So we've got all those Secure now the base Originally here this thing was sort of loose and flopping around but after you draw down the fasteners uh, It really holds the Really holds the cooler down so it's good and secure. So now we're ready to uh, get this installed in our test case and uh, power it up Okay, here's a quick teaser before I get it installed. I went ahead and powered it up uh, The motherboard itself is not powered up, but I powered up the fan by jumpering my power supply and uh, here's kind of how it functions. We have all the different features here. We have the slow breathing, the fast breathing. And then we can cycle through the different color modes. Green, blue. Quite a range of colors. So I think this will really look nice when we get it installed in the case. All right, so we have it installed in the case and all powered up. Now you can see it's cycling through some of the colors. I just have the controller kind of loose here so that it's easy to access. I can push through some of the features again there. You can make it solid and all the different functions. Anyway, this is a small cooler. It is definitely a low profile cooler. So if you have a system build, where you don't have the vertical height and you really need a low profile cooler, well this is definitely uh, a cooler that would fit that, uh, that sort of build just perfectly. Now a smaller cooler, you're not going to be able to thrash it thermally with hard overclocking like you would a much larger cooler, but uh, we'll put some heat to it here and just see how well it does. So here we have the system at idle. Looking at the thermal imaging camera there, you can see that's the intake for the fan, so that's going to be, of course, the coolest part. And then when we look past the fan, there's the motherboard, the VRM, which is close to 40 degrees C. And again, there you go, 41. We are at idle right now, so there's really no load on the system. So we'll go ahead and uh, put a little load on it and see what difference we see here. All right, now we have a, uh, a load on the CPU using Prime 95. These are stock speeds, though. We're not overclocked yet. And you can see there the intake is uh, a little bit warmer. And we come over here to the side of the motherboard, looking at the VRM. And again, it's, it's a few degrees warmer there. We were coming in around 40 before. Now we're 43, 44. Somewhere in that range. And the RPMs have changed from about 750 to about 2200, 2300. So the fan is definitely doing its job. So now it's time to uh, put a little overclock on it and see what that does. Now we've got the overclock up to 4.2, which is a mild overclock. This is idle, there's no load on the system. And you can see we're real close to 32C on the intake to the fan. And take a look up here at the VRM. And yeah, we're a little warmer there. So now it's time to put the load on it and see what that does. Okay, now we got the overclock going at uh, 4.2 with the load on the system. And the intake is right around 33C. 
We'll look at the VRM up here to see what's going on up there. I expect that to be a bit warmer. Yeah, we're 46, 47. I saw 48 there. So things are nice and toasty up there. Now the system temps, we are real close to 100. C, maybe just a tick below. And our intake there is getting a little bit warmer. But this is about what I expected for a cooler this size. It can hang in there, but it's not something you'd want to hammer all day long with a high thermal load. So we got a lot of thermal testing done. What have we really learned about this cooler? Well, at, uh, at normal clock speeds and even a mild overclock, it does pretty well. It can handle the heat, but when you get into the higher overclocks, uh, you really put a thermal load on this thing, and most people don't really thrash their systems uh, constantly like that, but uh, the cooler, tends to get to its upper limit there when you really put the heat to it. And it is a very small cooler, so you can't expect it to perform the same way you would a, a, a large uh, a liquid-cooled radiator type system. Now, Cooler Master has other solutions, and we will get to some of those here shortly, so uh, stay tuned for that. But what I want to talk about here is a little more of the specifics about uh, what makes this cooler different from other coolers. So, the first thing I want to talk about here is how um, air coolers work. Now, if you know anything about air coolers at all, they actually have water in them, uh, even though you don't have a radiator. And the way it works, your heat pipes, usually you see the vertical pipes that go up through the fin stack, they're actually hollow. On the inside, there's a small amount of water. And what happens is that water, when it's down at the bottom toward your CPU, where the heat is, uh, this works by a phase transition or a phase change when water, which is a liquid, is, uh, is heated up and it boils, it then goes to the gas phase and to do that it takes heat so you're put you're putting heat into the water causing the, the water to evaporate now that gas with the heat in it uh, migrates to the other end of the cooler the cool end where the fans are blowing across the fin stack and now the heat is gone so the liquid uh, is no longer in the gas phase it condenses back to a liquid and it wicks down through the heat pipe and goes back to uh, where the CPU is the hot end so you have this cycle that's constantly happening so that's how a, an air cooler works. And this cooler here from Cooler Master operates on the same principle, except instead of having a bunch of small heat pipes, it has one big heat pipe, one giant heat pipe sitting right on top of your CPU. So uh, it says here that it's seven times larger diameter, <clears throat> pardon me, than your heat pipes. So we really do have something that, that other coolers don't have. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about here is the low profile. That's a nice feature to have, especially if you're trying to build a low profile case, something in an ITX uh, series, you really need that low profile. You can't have a really tall cooler. Now, the other nice thing is since it's a top flow cooler, all of your air that's being drawn in from the top is being pushed out. It exits through the bottom of the cooler and it um, goes across all your motherboard components. So you get a cooling effect there too. It's a win-win. We have RGB lighting. Who doesn't like RGB lighting? It's common now, just about everything has it. So RGB lighting, <clears throat> another cool factor. Now, uh, it's quick and easy to install. That's another thing I really like about this cooler. Price point, we're in the $50 to $55 range. Uh, decent price for a cooler with all of these features. So, again, uh, stay tuned. we got some other cool coolers from Cooler Master coming up, along with some cases. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.